Attack on Titan is all about soldiers. No matter if it's on Paradis, Marley, or other places around the world, every soldier in our story fights for their country or for some other cause they believe in. As a soldier myself, I figured it would be cool to make a series of videos featuring different soldier types and situations throughout the story, give you my perspective, and analyze some of the most interesting main and side characters of Attack on Titan. Hello Titan fans and welcome back to my channel for another Attack on Titan video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to let me know and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Like I said, this video is all about soldiers, so today we will address Reiner's life and his medical condition. We will also talk about the early life of Jean, his character development, and the connection he shares with Peek, which we will also talk about today. Everything in this video is from the point of view of a soldier. The early life of Jean just like a lot of other kids in his age who joined the army, Jean also aimed for a comfortable life inside Walsina. He always wanted to join the military police, which, unlike the scouts, were considered a very popular selection. Jean hoped to become one of the top 10 and get the ability to decide where he wants to be placed. His early main goal in life was to get away from under his mom's control, which, in reality, was not doing anything wrong. Jean simply was a very ungrateful young man on those days, and it is featured in Jean's OVA, which I talked about in this video, if you're interested. Jean had several people that influenced his development. Two major ones were Marco Butt and Eren Jaeger. As one of his best friends, Jean loved Marco, and more than that, he respected him. Marco's death made Jean understand that sometimes he needs to put the sake of others before himself. With the image of his friend's burned bones in his hand, Jean decided to give up on his comfortable life in the military police and instead he joined the scouts. This is not unusual for soldiers to dedicate their life honoring their dead friends, and Jean's reaction to losing his friend was very understandable. Carrying the weight and honor of your dead comrades is a known and sad thing among soldiers, and it is a constant motive in Attack on Titan as well, best featured in Erwin's battle speech. Because if we fight and carry on, we give purpose to their actions and meaning to their deaths. Unlike Marco, Eren and Jean never really shared a traditional relationship bond, but soldiers usually share a much greater bond than relationship. In a way, it is a family of some kind, and like in every family, some distant cousins never get along. This bond is formed from shared experiences, and it is best shown when Flock meets the group when he joins the scouts. He notices that they all look different somehow, and that is because they shared something only they can understand. This connection grows over time as the unit gathers more experience, so even if some members don't necessarily like each other, they still share a strong connection and will be willing to put their life on the line for any member of the unit. The same way is with Jean and Eren. That's why their rivalry never went beyond the casual fights we witnessed, and they never wished any harm to one another. That is also why Mikasa didn't even try to break apart their fight, because she knew this is just how they interact with each other. Oh yes, and there's Levi too. Even though they were rivals for the majority of the story, Jean later confessed he was jealous of Eren's determination and the way he always moved forward towards his objective. This is something Eren showed from the very beginning when he was bragging about killing all the titans to his young friends. This is also why Jean got so upset back then, because he saw in Eren something he didn't have, and only later he finally realized he admired this part of him. In a way, Eren drove Jean to become a better man and a better soldier by putting a reverse mirror in front of him, giving Jean an objective and a way to improve himself. That is another important aspect of the unit. The competitive factor is usually incredibly high. Every part of the unit wants to prove themselves, and no one wants to be left behind. In that way, they are all constantly pushing each other to improve and to become better soldiers. And in that intense process, you bond in such a way that usually lasts for life. That is, at least, in my case. Jean and Eren did share some things in common. First, the affection for Mikasa. This is something that always annoyed Jean. Why does a person like Mikasa will ever go with someone like Eren? And as expected, this also motivated Jean to evolve into something better, because let's face it, Jean was in love with Mikasa since the day he met her. He even tried to sketch her in his OVA, showing some nice drawing skills. One thing Jean and Eren did agree on was their respect towards Marco. Marco did promise Eren that Jean will become a great leader someday. Jean Kirnstein was top 6 in his class, 
and according to Keith Shadis, he is the best ODM gear user out of the top 10. Jean will grow up very quickly as he will face many battles and close friends deaths. He will overcome his fears and his selfish desires and like we've seen in the latest events of season 4, he will rise to the occasion in a way that would surely make his friend Marco proud. A soldier and a warrior. Reiner was never supposed to get into the warrior program. He will later find out he was accepted to the program only because Marcel. Marcel wanted to protect his little brother, so he convinced his commanders that Reiner is the better choice. As a kid, Reiner always wished for a family, but he knew his father was Marleyan, so that was not possible. That's why he wanted to become a warrior, to gain a higher status and become an honorary Marleyan. He hoped this will make his dad come home and they could all finally be a family. By the time he realized he couldn't get his wish, he was already accepted into the program and destined to go to the island. After he lost his wish for a family and also learned from Marcel that he wasn't good enough to become a warrior on his own, Reiner was left with nothing. That's why he decided to dedicate what's left of his terrible situation, refused to go back home and pushed his friends to attack Paradis even after Marcel died, even though his friends wanted to go back home. The warriors are different from the soldiers of Paradis, mainly because they fight for a country that is not their own. They are not equal citizens of that country, and they are utilized mainly for war, the same way the 86th are used in the anime 86. But most of the warriors do identify themselves as loyal citizens of Marley, rejecting their alien past and fighting for something they believe in. For example, Gabi fights in order to clear up their name that has been tainted by the alien history. For young Reiner, that was the same, at least until he came back home from Paradis Island after living among the people from the other side of the walls. Even though Reiner is one of my favorite characters, I can admit he should have never gotten into the warrior program. And just like it was originally planned, Porco was probably the better pick for this mission. That might sound harsh, but this is a high-stake military operation. You can't afford to get this wrong, and you need the best people who could handle the job. Who knows, maybe if Porco was around, things could have ended differently back then. This chain of events led Reiner into a situation he had nothing more to benefit. But from fear for his life and for the life of his family, he decided to keep on with their mission. Now, let's be clear. No child should ever be in a situation they have to go to war. I would expect grown-up people to get affected, not to mention children. But for the sake of our story, we can see that Reiner was maybe a bit more affected than the other warriors. Reiner is not a weak person, but we could see how the concept of war and the conflict took a major hit on him, unlike Annie and Bert, who weren't affected like he was. And again, it's not because he was weaker than them, they were simply better suited for this mission. When seeing Marco being eaten, Reiner's mind couldn't handle what he just did. He will later even kill the Titan to try and save his friend, not realizing he was the one who sent him to his death. Most of you have probably heard the term PTSD when talking about Reiner's condition. PTSD, which stands for post-traumatic stress disorder, is a general term for a very large group of symptoms in soldiers who've been to battle. It can also be seen among people who've gone through some sort of mental or physical abuse. PTSD comes in a lot of different forms. In Reiner's condition, it seems that he suffers from some sort of dissociation. People suffering from dissociation describe it as flashbacks to certain events, feeling they are briefly losing touch with everything around them and experiencing events from a different place or time. Some say it is like blanking out or not remembering anything for a period of time. This condition may come with memory loss of people, events, time periods and more. In Reiner's case, we can also find evidence of subconscious blocks. Those are some kind of defense mechanism of our minds, designed to deal with emotional pain ranging from grief and loss, betrayal, abuse, rejection and more. Reiner's mind developed two versions of him, one of a warrior on a mission to save the world and the other of a soldier who fights titans to save humanity. His mind playing tricks on him is probably what protected Reiner from completely losing it. And luckily for us and also him, his condition didn't seem to last for long. And even though he was always clearly suffering from mental pain, we can definitely say that Reiner never lost his grip on reality. He did grow up to be a very depressed individual and even close to suicidal. But at each point of his life, 
Reiner found a reason to push on forward and, in most cases, it was for helping and saving others. There is a reason Isayama admitted that Reiner is his favorite character, and that is just it. His dedication, his lack of selfishness, and the way he treats the people he cares about. All above makes Reiner an incredibly good written character. Reiner is an awesome character, a dedicated warrior, and a tremendous soldier. And for our last soldier for today, let's talk about Peak Finger and the special bond she shares with John. A tank is a family. Not a lot can be said about Peek before the time we met her, and that is because Peek had very little information about her. In a way, she is very similar to Berthold, as we know she joined the Warriors program to help her sick father. Peek had so little information about her that we only got to know her last name, Finger, in the episode she met Levi and Hanji. You might think it was mentioned way before when the Titans were introduced, but if you check, you will see they only refer to her as Peek. The reason for that is unknown, but we do know Peek's character was only later created, as the design for her titan in the manga was completely different. There was also a rumor her character was supposed to be an old man, which will make sense with that old titan design. But luckily, Isayama decided to ditch that idea and give us adorable Peek, which by the way has a lot more to offer in the upcoming final arc. But no spoilers. Peak's Titan is different from the other Titans for several reasons. The ones important to this video are the fact that it can carry objects on its back and that it can remain in Titan form for months. This is the reason why Peak sometimes has a hard time going back to walking like a person and scares Porgo to death. In a way, the card Titan is designed to be a tank, and it also operates as such. With front and sides gunners and loaders that also provide a wide viewing angle, and peak, which is of course the tank itself. A word about a crew tank. Unlike other land units, the tank crew is often considered a single unit, all working together to operate the tank. In our case, Peak doesn't actually need someone to operate her, but her crew does provide cover and keeps her blind spots in check. A crew of a tank is extremely close, and if one falls, it usually affects the others drastically. Not only because each one has a specific role, but also because it is a tremendous kick to the group morale having your dead friend who you considered family lies dead next to you inside a confined space. And just like the cult titan endurance to remain in titan form behind enemy lines, a tank crew often stays together for extremely long periods of time. Do you want to go to the toilet? Good luck! Welcome to tank life! What happens in a tank stays in a tank. No matter how you look at it, this kind of experience creates a very strong bond between people. Peek had the same mentality with her crew. It was clearly shown in the manga, but only later in the anime we could also see every one of them having a picture of all of them together just to emphasize how close they really were. Her crew loved her, and just to remind you, they were Marleans and she was an Eldian, but regardless, they shared a bond much stronger than race or past events. They shared a bond of blood, forged in battle, side by side for long periods of time like a nuclear family. A family that was taken away from her in a single thunder spear. Jean Kirenstein is the man who blew up her family and later also tried to kill Falco in front of her. This is the bond Pic and Jean share, and yes, it is a sinister one because working with someone who killed your loved ones is never easy. And of course, we can see it in our story with several characters that we will also talk about in future videos. And yes, there will be a Levi video, and it will be glorious. But now, seriously, working with a former enemy is never easy, but even in our world we can see examples of such things. As time passed and the world changed, countries that were once enemies started developing a kinder relationship. That can be for several reasons and it usually benefits both countries, entering into a peace treaty. In my opinion, leaving behind past grudges and working together with people who you once considered enemies is a crucial step towards a better future. And even though it might hurt working with people who killed someone close to you, you still do it. Especially if there is a greater cause on the line. Because you are a soldier and you are trained to put others before yourself. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed this first video in my video series I am a soldier. Please give this video a little like and subscribe if you haven't already and also let me know which character do you want me to focus on in future videos. Don't worry, I have plenty of ideas but I want to see what interests you so don't be shy to offer also side characters. 
Only remember, I am going to analyze them from the viewpoint of a soldier. And that is all for this video, my titan loving friends, and I will see you all real soon in the next one, and even sooner in the comments. And until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.